Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. So this is probably the rarest and most collectible physical PlayStation 4 game out there. It is called, and I'm not joking here, Poop Slinger. Now, when this was released, only 84 people actually bought it before it was discontinued. And the story of how this got published is absolutely bonkers. So in this video, we're gonna talk about that, as well as the possibility that maybe there's more out there to be found. Let's take a look. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that this sealed and brand new copy of the game comes courtesy of a viewer of my channel. His name is Shane, and he sent this to me for this video. So a huge shout out to Shane. Thank you so much for trusting me with this rare game, because I will be sending it back to him once this is done. Now, the story of this game starts off like a lot of other indie games. Poop Slinger was released. <laughs> I, I have to crack up every time I say that. Poop Slinger. So much poop right in my mouth. Get out of here. So Poop Slinger was released on August 2018 for the PlayStation 4 and Steam by a company called Diggity.net. Now, according to their Facebook page, it was founded back in June 2010. And if you check out their webpage, it looks like they've been making small indie games for a while now. They have a couple here, including a game looks like Lunch Truck Tycoon 2, Planet Assault, and as you can see, a bunch of others. So yeah, this game comes out, it's called Poop Slinger, and uh, it seems legit. There's poop in my hair. Now the story gets a little bit more interesting when a publisher named Limited Rare Games contacts the small indie developer and offers to publish their game. So what they want to do is do a collector's edition of Poop Slinger on the PlayStation 4 that has all of the DLC, um, you know, all of the weapons that you can unlock, plus the zombie DLC on a disc. And I'm sure diggity.net thought, sure, that's pretty cool. We're a small indie developer and here's somebody who's going to make a physical version of our game. But things get very interesting very quick because they announced that they're gonna put it on for sale on April 1st, 2019 for $33.99. Now on the surface, maybe if you're outside the US and you're not familiar with the significance of April 1st, you might be wondering what's the big deal. However, for pretty much everyone that I know, we are aware that April 1st is a big, big holiday called April Fool's Day. This is a day when you cannot trust anything that is put out there from PR departments, marketing people, your friends, your family, everyone tries to fool each other. So here <laughs> along comes this game called Poop Slinger, which by itself just seems like a joke, right? You're like, okay, is this game for real? And a physical version is gonna be put out for sale on April 1st. So immediately red flags are going off all over the internet. Ah ha ha, very funny, yeah, 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 yeah. And to make matters even worse, the website that they had set up did not uh, instill much confidence. As you can see here, this is taken from the Wayback Machine because it's no longer up, but you can see it's pretty bare bones, pretty bare bones. And again, to make matters even worse, down below at the bottom of the page, there's some Russian there, which, okay, that seems kind of interesting, but you put it into the Google Translate and it basically says that they reserve the right to store and maintain your personal information. So if you are a potential customer, <laughs> you're, you know, there's all these red flags going off. You're like, okay, it's a game called Poop Slinger. It's uh, coming out on April Fool's Day. And oh, by the way, they wanna, they wanna keep and retain all of our personal information. Yeah, no thanks. So as you can imagine, uh, sales were not what they expected. Now, one thing to really note here is that Sony does not do uh, runs of physical games that are less than a thousand copies. So 
as you see on their website, they basically say, hey, you know, about 800 are gonna be for sale. Well, that's because 1,000 is a minimum print run, and then often publishers and developers will keep a certain amount to send to reviewers, and uh, maybe they'll get returns on defects and stuff like that. So you never actually sell all of them. You would actually keep some back for, you know, all the, the, the maintenance and uh, the PR and the marketing and stuff like that. So this looks legit at this point. I mean, it makes total sense, but the thing is, no one was buying it. Well, I don't wanna say nobody, but what happened was later on that day, they started putting out announcements saying, uh-oh, uh, hey guys, we're gonna go out of business if we don't sell more of these. Is this a game to you? Now, normally when things aren't selling very well and demand is somewhat low, typically you would lower the price to maybe entice potential customers that were on the fence and didn't know if they wanted to jump in or not. No, 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 no. Limited Rare Games actually raised the price from $33.99 to about $50 to try to make up sales on the people who actually were willing to take a chance. And in hindsight, that probably was not the right move. I mean, I, I don't claim to know, I'm just saying that, you know, if you were already apprehensive, raising the price later on in the day, I just don't know if that would work. And in the end, it didn't. Another thing that was a serious red flag for people was the company's logo. Now, initially they were using basically the same font and style as limited run games. And then I guess they got called out on that. Limited Run actually told them to stop doing that. So then they started using super rare games as a logo, or at least the, the font and style. Again, all of this just added up to like, this has gotta be a joke. Almost immediately they announced that they'd have to go out of business. But to their credit, they did say they would honor the 84 people who did take a chance and did buy the game. Although I have to believe that a lot of those people who did that were like, uh-huh, yeah, I doubt I'll ever see my, <laughs> my money again. I know some people posted it's like, well, since it was going through PayPal, they would simply just use PayPal to get a refund, which makes total sense. But to everyone's surprise, maybe even including the developer themselves, people started to get copies of the game in the mail. And as you can see here on the box, it still has that limited run style logo right there. I mean, they basically just stole that directly from them. What's wild about this whole story is now you have 84 copies of this game out there in physical form. And that is such a low number for such a popular console like this. It's insanity. It's amazing that this actually happened. I mean, nobody could have predicted this. You know that, that, that saying where people are like, you know, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. This is definitely a case of that. And so on sites like eBay, you're starting to see some of these come up and the prices are all over the place. About a month ago, it seems like that they were asking around $1,000, but lately, uh, in just the last couple of weeks, it seems like it's starting to hover around $500 or so. It's really hard to tell. I, I, I know some of them have sold around that, but it's hard to say where this is ultimately gonna end up. I also wanna mention that there doesn't appear to be any proof of ill will or intent on the part of the publisher or the developer to scam the public. I mean, they did ship the game um, just as they promised. I think it was just a matter of being completely clueless about the customers and, you know, April Fool's Day doing any sort of announcement like that, plus having a game called Poop Slinger. <laughs> You know, it just was a, I, I think it, it feels like it was a complete misunderstanding. And what's sad is that the publisher now is out of business. As you can see here, they have posted on their Twitter that they are now going back to work at Walmart. Um, and the developer still appears to be cruising right along. So on their Facebook page and their Twitter, they continue to post and it looks like they are still developing games. I'm really curious about the other 800 copies because remember, Sony requires you to print off a thousand even for these small runs. So while they only sold 84 of these to collectors, there must be like say in a warehouse somewhere, 
another 800 or so. And they probably have no idea what to do with it. It's probably, you know, the bank repossessed it or something like that because obviously they went out of business. So who knows? I mean, maybe in six months, a year, five years, 10 years, who knows? But I'm sure at some point, someone will figure out what they are, maybe put them on eBay and collectors like us will be able to jump all over it. But I would love to know, did you actually buy this when it was announced on April 1st? I would love to know down in the comments below if you actually have this in your collection. Also, if they do find those other 800 copies and put them on eBay, would you pick it up? And how much would you pay? That's the question, because as you can see from the gameplay footage, eh, the game is just okay, right? But if you're going for a complete collection, this one might have to be in there. So it could be pretty pricey. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.